Well, hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a Chevy Blazer running. So we picked up like a 78-ish Chevy Blazer in the junkyard with all the other stuff and it supposedly ran when parked, just had some broken leaf springs. I don't know much else about it. Ran when parked, there's new leaf springs inside of it, so who knows what's wrong with it. We'll see how it goes, but we're gonna throw a battery in it. You can't drive her out of here. Shouldn't be too bad, small block Chevy, HEI, quarter jet, the usual stuff. Figured I'd shoot this video inside because the sound quality sucks outside. And then there's these two annoying dogs that aren't nearly as cool as Duffy. They're probably gonna be barking and whatnot. So let's get after it. There she is, look at how pretty it is. They didn't wanna sell me that one, they're saving that. But I got the two crappiest blazers here. This is the better of the two. Let's get after it. So here she is. Apparently it's been rattle canned. It was red, orange, not really sure. I don't know what year it is, cause, oh, look at that door latch. I mean, yeah, just take a little tin and rivet it on. I'm sure that's good. Green shag carpet, custom made floor mats. She's got a 100 mile an hour speedometer. Oh, a rampage deck with a CD adapter. It's got the ashtray, center console that's laying loose on top of the green shag. Oh, it's got keys and maybe even a spare set. Low and high lock. Oh, it must be a 203, dang it. There's the new used leaf spring. Oh, hey, look. An extra fan shroud. Oh, that's nifty. I wonder if that's factory. Oh my gosh. Oh goodness, just feel it. It's like a bearskin rug mounted to the ceiling. Just need a fireplace. Custom deluxe, wood grain trim, add on choke lever. This must be for the fancy lights up front or the sex lights underneath the dash. Somebody got the rampage add on radio. What, what, year, what, what year are you? What are you? I'm guessing 78, because there's an eight there. I'm gonna six after that, who knows? Who knows? Maybe there's some dock. Oh, even shag carpet in the glove box. This guy, he went all out. Oh. What year are you? Ooh, the spid sheet. She's got the three passenger rear seat. Oh, 400, 31 gallon tank. Cigarette lighter, chrome bumpers, gauges, saddle interior. Crimson red she is with a white top. Towing device, AM radio. Tilt steering, nice. Buckets, side trim, and an automatic. Doesn't say the year though. Well, I guess we keep digging. Maybe it says under the hood. Full-time four-wheel drive, sure enough, that verifies it. How many miles? 29,000, so I suppose that's 129. Oh, must have add-on AC. There's the heater, and there's the add-on AC. Missed out on that one, it's got the cool seats and the sport mirrors. Look at those lights, though. It's got my, oh, it's even got a 400 emblem. There's no way that's in there. Oh, someone stole the fan. That's why the radiator shroud's inside. Why would, why would you just need a fan? Okay. Maybe they were stealing my awesome AC stuff. Looks like the York compressor is still there. Power steering, power brakes. I'll have to uh, turn it over and see if the notch is in the harmonic balancer to see if it's a 400. Two barrel? Uh, yeah, it is. I don't know if they made a two barrel 400. I think they did actually. I know guys have done it anyway. I'm guessing it's just a 350. I don't really care. Ooh, a bonus battery. Oh, the jack's even there. Dang! Hopefully the lights work. Tow bar or tow hooks. It's really not that rusty, actually. Well, it's rusty. 
but these blazers are always the worst. Locking gas cap. At least they didn't paint over the Chevrolet, so you know what it is. Let's uh, throw a battery in it, see what happens. Let's see if there's even battery cables in it. Uh, positive. I'm guessing the negative was bolted right there and is no longer present. Great. Well, hopefully we can find one somewhere. There's a few GMs. Found a negative cable off one of the A-body cars out here. Of course, the engine was gone, so I just got the cable and no bolts. So I'll just vice grip it on there. Good to go. I wonder if we shouldn't find some quarter inch or five sixteens nuts to put on there. Where is there a five sixteens nut on these vehicles? Oh, look at this custom power steering bracket. Well, let's see if it cranks over. Custom key guard. Here goes nothing. Oh, usual GM floppy column. It just clicks. I wonder if we got that bad ground. I really need a better pair of ice grips to haul it around. Let's see if we turn over my hand. Yeah, that might be our problem. She's stiff. Yeah, that's no good. Why would that be stuck? Let me use this as a bar. Put tension on that. There we go. Oh, yeah. It's loose ish. Maybe if we get a better clamp on there. Well, I wonder if I crawl underneath and wallop on that a little bit. The seller guaranteed us they ran when they were parked. Couldn't get the blazer going at the junkyard. Drug it home. Why did they paint it? Why didn't they paint all of it? Must have been Raiders fans. That quarter panel actually looks pretty good. A lot of goof off and to take all that off. You're no help. Lick that paint off there. Dug through my heap. Found a used starter. So gonna pop the other one off hopefully this one's the same hopefully we can get this hog to fire up that's the look of confidence right there duff dog huh back on the k5 scene well we got the starter slammed in there i forgot how much those sucked especially with a four-wheel drive and the drive shaft goes hee -hoo, right in the flipping way and our sweet side post battery cables hooked up with our ct round of them offer fan we don't need no stinking fan I'm sure we checked the dipstick when we tried to start it the first time, so... Prepare for disappointment! Park? Oh boy. She's floppy. GMC steering wheel. Horn works. Did we put another bad starter in it? Small block Chevys. Supposed to just fire right up. Hey, fixed it. Nice work, Duff. Got our marine tank hooked up. Oh, we should probably plug that return line because that's going to spit gas all over. Hopefully the fuel pump works. There was some gas in the line and it smells like a baby's diaper full of Indian food. So we don't want to pump any of that bad gas up there. So the lines are cut off. We're going to give her some hot sauce. See if it'll fire up. She probably... Plug that line though. This one's got the return line. Emissions things. Thanks, Ralph Nader. 516 bolt stuffed in the end of the line. I suppose we should tighten the clamp. This fuel pump's gonna be dried up anyway. When we're gonna get my favorite electric fuel pump out, or just electric fuel pump in general. I don't have a favorite because I hate them all. A little shot of hot sauce. Big shot. Slingshot engaged. Turn it over better. We got no spark. 
guess let's check for spark. Got our handy dandy spark tester imported from who knows some Asian country most likely. Yeah, that thing fits on the plug like garbage. Duff, turn the key over. I can see spark. Hey, look at this. Got a spare spark plug plugging that vacuum line. That's a, that's a good AC plug right there. It wants it. Well, are we pumping any fuel up here? Oh. I would say we're getting fuel. Let's turn it over just to make sure. Yeah, plenty of fuel. I'm sure that's not flammable. It'll be all right. We don't need no water. Float stuck. Up. CT hammer. It's just an all around versatile tool. Throttle, is it stuck? Oh, ho, ho. timing sounds off. the brake pedal and the brake light come on on the dash. Oh, it's got 45 pounds of oil pressure, so it must have oil in it. Sounds like it's got an exhaust leak or just no exhaust at all. We just need to put an alternator belt on it. Let's see if we got any brake fluid. Is that why the light was on? Oh man, I hate them clamps. Oh, yeah, there's brake fluid in there. Good enough. wonder if it even needed that starter. Yeah, rig up our fuel tank. Put an alternator on it, check some more fluids, pump up some tires, take it for a rip. Blazer things. So allegedly the reason they parked this blazer is because too many fat bottom girls jumping railroad tracks, you know, kind of like the Duke boys, but in thicker country. And the rear springs are shot. So we rounded up this spare differential with springs on it. These are a 51 inch spring. I guess the two wheel drives are 54. Tech tip of the day, two wheel drive springs are longer than four wheel drive. Who'd have thunk? Anywho, these came out of a half ton pickup. Hopefully they fit. We're gonna try to save as much of this hardware as we can because we're on a budget. We gotta follow it. We're gonna lose the shop, Duff. You don't care. So persuaded out of there. We're just going to let that spring eye bolt soak a bit. It's kind of bound up in the rubber bushing. I don't know what we should do there. I don't want to tear up that bushing because the bushing is probably going to cost more than the springs. I know these U-bolts are going to cost more than the springs. They don't give them away.
some shit going off there. Where's the whammer? Comment down below with how you get these bolts out without ruining the rubber. And I know 95% of you just put new bushings in. But we're in a budget here. As you can tell from my apparel, it looks like I just crawled out of a dumpster. I do that just because I like the smell. And the smoke screen, it adds to the effect. It's like in the movies. So now we just gotta get that bushing out that bowl and we can push it back in. But that's hot. What are the odds that goes back in there? Let's take it to the vise. It's stronger than us. So we get our socket set on top of our vise. A little bit bigger than the bolt and washer in there. Now we gotta just get that back into the bushing. A little's good, a lot's better. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! All the way! Boom! It's like we knew what we were doing. That'll put a little spring in your step. <laughs> I wonder how the old ones will come out. I'm sure they'll come out swimmingly. Poor man's lift kit right here. Take out your busted up old springs. And some new ones in. Figure before we uh, spring into action, <laughs> I would show you the springs here. Well, maybe I'll show you a better shot once we get the tire off. Ah, what the heck? The suspense is probably killing you. See, look at all that big stack of leaf springs. Ah, we're putting an even bigger stack in. I can't count. We'll lay them side by side, but see how there's like, I don't know. Five springs up there, six, and uh, only one back here. Yep, that's uh, not good. Doesn't help that the tires are low on this side, but let's measure. We'll call that 23 inches at the top of the bumper and uh, almost 27 on this side, so nearly four inches different. That spring doesn't look too bad. You always gotta replace them in pairs. We're gonna start with that side, just in case it's so miserable that we only replace one. And now we spring into action. I'm not actually sure if that other one's got fat bottom girl springs in it or what, but got a little bit more thread showing on these U-bolts. So we'll try to save those too, but I think those are a larger spring stack. So this thing's really gonna be doing the reverse Carolina lean. The downward dog, is that what they call that, Duffy? Fun part. So it looks like it had six leaves, including the overload. And uh, it's basically just down to the main leaf. So, you know, it was still at like a solid 13 and a quarter percent of load capacity. Well, probably 15% with the overload. <laughs> What if we pry and turn? 
Oh my gosh, I had an idea and it actually worked. What are the odds the front one goes as swimmingly? Oh my. Oh my. The odds are pretty slim. We're going to actually do both sides here. Bunged up the threads a little bit, to be expected. Now she's going to let her down a bit. Just like the shock, holding this up. So the proper way would be to remove that shock. No shock removal required. Can you put a spring in backwards? If you can, I'm probably about to do it. Yep. This one's usually more difficult because the other end's already fixed, but between the flex of the spring and the motion of the ocean back here, shackle, what notage. It's usually a two person job, or maybe get some ratchet straps or vice grips. I don't know. We're just going to do it the hard way. Sweet! Where's the nut now? <laughs> Turns out the blazer U bolts are none too long either with this extra spring. Dang it. Well, the BDBH pulled the threads right out of that one. Good thing we got spares. Let's throttle her back to say two on the four scale. Yeah, it needs longer U bolts, but that's what we got. Good enough for who it's for. Well, we're stocking up on weed killer for next summer. How dare you! Hope there's less than three gallons in there. Otherwise, we're gonna have to dump something in somebody's vehicle across the street so we can free up some room. Once we get that sucked out, we can put some new fuel lines on here and hopefully it'll run by its own. Started taking the alternator off. Who knows, we might try to weld a nut on there and see if we can Get that bolt out of there because it's cold outside and I don't want to go looking for another alternator. 
Oh, hey, look at this. Got our new springs in. Even did the other side. That's right. We're doing it all up. P.S. I hate locking gas caps. Almost, not quite, almost as much as flexi radiator hoses. Yeah, this one sucked. I ended up having to cut this loop off the other spring and then cut the bushing just to get the bolt out so I could save the bolt. What a freaking pain. That sucked. But we got it. Ooh, found some good used brake drums, didn't we, Duff? Oh, it's got brand new brakes on it. So I'm guessing that's why somebody stole the drums because somebody just put brakes on it. It almost got to come up in the front. She sits pretty high with that extra leaf back there. What do we got? I don't even know what we went off of. We'll call it, uh, about 29 and a half. So I think it came up like two and a half inch inches on that side. I don't remember. That was like two days ago. Hey, we're at like 29 and three eighths on this side. So pretty good. I'm sure those tires are different sizes. They're pumped up to 40. Mainly on that side, so it'll go bang and scare somebody. Can all later on it. Get some fuel in it. Check back shortly. So, sometimes you just can't catch a break. So I welded a couple of nuts on that busted off bolt to get it out. Snapped about four off, and then it finally started coming, and then, boom, the ear snapped off. So then I went out back in the shed, Grabbed another alternator. It was missing the pulley because I gave it to somebody who needed it more than me. It's clocked differently where the terminals were at. So I thought, oh yeah, let's just spin it 180 degrees. So, tech tip of the day. Here's how to rotate the housing on a GM alternator or maybe other alternators. So you got this neat little hole right there. What you gotta do is you gotta push the brushes in past these, or compress this spring, and then you slide a paper clip or a torch tip cleaner in there to hold it, and then you slide it in place, and then pull your clip out, good to go. Because those brushes, I'm not a terminologyist, so those right on that, boom, electricity, you don't die on the side of the road. So, I'll get that put together. Hold tight. So there you have it. Got that slid through there. Holding those brushes down under those springs. What a miserable job that is. Let's put it together. So then you take and you make sure you do it the right way. So we probably should have just stretched the wires to start. Called it good. There we go. And I do not think you can slide that in there beforehand. I think you got to take it apart and do it like I did. So, then you just slide that out. Put your four screws back in. Doop, doop, doop. Tighten them up, and you're good to go. I need to steal that bracket off the back. I'll re-clock an alternator. Just get yourself a little paper clip or some torch tip cleaner. Maybe some mechanics wire. Number nine wire, quick dick McDick. Might be a little bit... Thick in diameter. Bored you right to sleep, didn't I, Duff? All right, back at it. Okay, we got the factory fuel hoses replaced. Check some fluids. Hook the battery up. Blew some air in the fuel tank to try to push that fuel up here. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but see what happens. Duff dog is ready to go for a ride. What are the odds it goes, Duff? So I guess one of the other things we did was we uh, put the fan on and uh, the alternator and apparently this belt was not happy about that. We gotta get this going or we're gonna lose the shop duff. All hands on deck. It's a good year gator back. That's a fancy belt. Maybe let's try starting it with all the alternator hooked up. I think the alternator was hooked up when I got it just that the fan was off and that clears everything. 
Can't remember if we had the fan on when we started it the first time. Probably not. to it but it's got good oil pressure maybe it's just the exhaust leak brake light went out as soon as I hit the brakes I think it was because we didn't have any drums on the back turns out that must be an issue thanks for the warning light on that GM I'm gonna start it up again try to keep it running maybe that pulley's bent pulleys aren't wobbling fore and aft and they seem to be eccentricized so let's put an alternator belt back on if I haven't already mentioned go check out coastal auto reaction an old car guy and Robert's garage links in the description below good dudes Old car guy, he's working on square body. Robert, he's working on everything. Coastal auto reaction. They like their Mopars. Mopar or no car. All right. See if that belt stays on. You got it too tight last time. Stick. That might be an issue. We got some Castrol Transmax. Yeah, we're taking her to the max. Automatica transmission fluid. A little's good, a lot's better. You just really don't know how much to put in there when it's not on the stick. And it's charging! You know how I know? Tech tip of the day. You got an alternator you want to test and you don't have any tools or you're too lazy to grab a voltmeter like me. You start the engine up and you take something metal like your knife or a fork or a wrench and you set it up against the housing on the back of the alternator. If it magnetizes to the alternator, it's charging. I don't know how many volts. Who cares about volts? It's all about amps, right? Anyway, it's charging if it magnetizes. It works. So it turns out there's a little chunk of uh, rubber hose. Oh yeah, right by the transfer case-ish area. I don't know if when I was blowing air in the tank, it pressurized that, blew her out, but. That's why it was only leaking when it was running, because the return line only has fuel when it's running, pushing fuel back, maybe-ish. <laughs>
Hopefully that's tight enough. Hopefully five quarts of ATF is enough too. It goes forward and backwards. You guys saw that. Transmission's full, six gallons of gas in it, alternator's charging, oil pressure, both headlights, both taillights, even license plate light are working. Got one park light out, brakes are working, oh, don't have dash lights. Yeah, she's road ready. Put the alternator on it, fix an exhaust leak, nah, next guy's problem. Yeah. Wait till the sun comes up. I'm over a test drive. I think we're gonna hook a battery cable up. I don't like letting them sleep with those hooked up because who knows? Things burn down. And we're gonna go for a ride. As you can tell, Duffy is nice and warm in the shop here, not shivering. But once he jumps in, he starts shaking with excitement. So don't you worry. Duffy's nice and warm and he's fed and he's well taken care of and he's a happy puppy. But he loves rides so much that he shakes when we take off. Right. Oh yeah, good boy. You like it back there better or what? Now, apparently, you gotta go out the window. <laughs> Like the Impala. Now, like the Impala, not as bad. 
This thing ain't half bad. All right, next day. All right, 34 degrees, been sitting all night. See what happens. Oh yeah, we got a choke. Thirty pounds of oil pressure, charging like a son of a gun. Terrible exhaust leak. Terrible seat. Thing hooked up backwards. This will find out. So that's how you tell if you got a 203 versus a 205. If there's no two-wheel drive option in there, you. I've got a full-time four-wheel drive 203. This quarter actually doesn't look that bad, but maybe there's a bunch of bodywork underneath that rattle canning. Fender's got some rot. Rockers are pretty, sh yeah, not too bad, but door's just got a ton of surface rust on it. A little lip rust, not too bad. Cut a hole in it for that speaker. Somebody must have dyed that panel. Oh man, that one's even black. They painted the inside of the door black. They shouldn't even sell rattle cans. <laughs> Fiberglass tops. Need some work. A little rust on the tailgate. Pretty good surface rust up here. Oh, they had a cover over it of sorts. This quarter, she's got a lot of mud. And you can see where they snuck a patch panel on over there. And a terrible job of it. Woof ta This rocker's a little bit worse. Door's probably nicer though. Oh, this side's been patched up too. Real good. Yeah, this door is definitely better. Still not good. Oh man, that bead hasn't seated itself yet. Wait for it. Fender's pretty good on this side. It's got a good hood, doesn't have the square body kink. Decent chrome bumper until they drilled holes in it for the lights. Pretty good grill and surrounds. Oh yeah, they drilled the holes for the winter front clip in there. Dang it. So I'm thinking, you know, ditch the lights, fix the wipers, fix the radio, get some new tires, fix the exhaust leak, fix the gauge cluster lights that aren't working and the gauges that aren't working. I don't think the temp gauge is working. Driver's seat needs fixed. Door lat striker needs, it needs a lot, but it could be a good driver. Do I really need another driver? What'd you guys do with this thing? Would you fix it? Would you just bomb it? Would you lift it? Big engine, big tires, restore it, find a 400 to put in it. Oh yeah, definitely needs a front seal in the tranny. So comment down below, let me know what you would do with a 1976 K5 Blazer, your very own. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos. Make sure you subscribe. Share with your friends. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. I could have fun in a Blazer. Matter of fact, let's go for a rip. Should probably get some gas, huh? Well, as you can tell, the second test drive didn't go nearly as well as the first. Guess we're gonna have to go dig up a tire. I don't think a tube's gonna fix that one. Oh man, you can see clear through to the other side. How neat is that?